Green rolling hills, the closest town hundreds of miles away. The sun's warmth was kept at a comfortable level by the thick clouds that curled along the blue sky like caterpillars. The only sound being the occasional baaing of the sheep and the crunching of the grass as they grazed. No one could blame the young shepherdess, Rachel, for being lulled to sleep. A leaf landed on her nose and tickled her nose, causing her to sneeze. The ginger-haired woman sat up while she yawned and rubbed the sleep from her eyes. Sat next to her were staff and rod, set aside so she could nap. The sheep she had been using as a pillow looked when it felt movement and then laid its head back down, closing its eyes, huffing a bit. Several sheep passed by Rachel. She mentally noted that they need to be sheared soon, as their coats were getting too long. Summer was also on its way, so she didn't want them overheating. She always fretted over them like a broody hen. She patted the pillow sheep's side. This sheep, in particular, Rachel had raised after its mother was preyed upon by a pack of wild dogs. She smiled as she watched the sheep for a minute. Two male lambs raced alongside their mother with energy that Rachel wished she still had. She chuckled when one of the lambs tripped and tumbled along the ground. Then she realized something was off. Rachel counted the sheep before her. Four? Five? Six? Oh no, one of them's gone. In response to her yelling, a couple sheep turned to look at her. The one she had used as a pillow stood up eyes wide. When the, when the sheep saw it was Rachel causing all the racket, it glared at her, then laid back down. The lamb stopped their frolicking and hid behind their mother. Rachel blushed a bit, but said nothing. Rachel quickly scooped up her staff and rod. Her hair was full of grass and her dress was covered in dirt, but she ignored all this. Her mind was totally focused on finding and returning the sheep home. She looked around desperately for any clues of where the sheep had headed off to. Rachel spotted a couple of tracks that led away from the rest of the herd. In her rush to find the sheep, Rachel didn't notice that Duke, the elderly livestock guardian dog, was also missing. Rachel ran. She ran so fast. To outsiders looking in, it would seem as she was racing the wind itself. The said wind caught her hair, causing it to flow up behind her, and under the sunlight, her hair seemed to be turning into a blazing fire. Bits and pieces of grass were knocked loose by the wind. Rachel left behind a confused herd of sheep in her wake. Rachel gripped her staff and rod close to her chest. Before her was a vast forest, known as Grim's Shadow by the locals. It was famous for the fact that it was nearly always pitch black, even during the summertime. It was also said to be littered with many monstrous creatures. Though Rachel had grown to believe those were just tales that parents told children to keep them from satiating their curiosity by exploring the forest. Well, she hoped so at least. The trees that made up the forest were huge and their branches curled like claws. They seemed to be reaching out to drag Rachel into the shadows. Unfortunately for Rachel, the tracks had led straight here. She sighed and steeled herself. She lifted her staff and used its hook to pull apart branches to make herself a path into the darkness. Every couple steps, Rachel would look down to make sure she was still following the tracks. Of course the forest's fame was well deserved, so it was hard to make out the tracks which frustrated Rachel. Low-hanging branches periodically pulled at her clothes and hair, growing her frustrations. The forest was also chilly, as the thick canopy of the trees blocked out most sunlight, as they greedily took the lion's share of it, keeping most of it away from the plants on the forest floor. Goosebumps pricked at Rachel's skin. She would soothe them by rubbing her arms. A couple times, the tracks would seemingly end. She also occasionally lost sight of them in the forest's darkness, but then Rachel would find more and continue her search circled back and they went forward as if the sheep had stopped and considered turning back. Rachel wondered what kept the sheep on its path into the forest depths. Suddenly, a plan shook and a rabbit jumped out. Rachel screamed and nearly smacked it with her staff. Thankfully, she caught herself and stopped her strike. Rachel sighed in relief and the rabbit jumped off, looking for food. Finally, after about an hour, Rachel stumbled into a clearing. She nearly fell to the ground, but she caught herself using her staff like a cane. At the center was the missing sheep. The sun and Rachel's excitement warmed her from the forest's chillness. Her skin seemed to crave the sun. She paused for a moment to absorb the warmth. After a second, she walked towards the sheep. You little troublemaker, I've been searching for- When Rachel patted the sheep, its body fell into itself, as if its bones had been removed or turned into dust. Rachel stared in shock. The better look, Rachel noticed two large puncture wounds in its neck. Its fleece was clean, no blood present. The veins in its face were prominent, however, and its eyes had rolled back into its skull. 
Rachel backed away, tears flooding her eyes. So focused on the terror before her, she missed the sound of undergrowth being crushed and moved aside. Rachel weeped. Though most would just consider this a loss of money, at most, this was genuine tragedy to Rachel. She had spent years of her life caring for these sheep. And like the other from before, she had raised this one. Though only because its mother had rejected it. In her grief, she knocked her rod out of her belt as she pulled the sheep closer, but she kept hold of her staff. Behind her, the perpetrator approached. Six eyes watched Rachel, and one leg of eight was lifted into the air. Sun glinted off the dark exoskeleton. Crimson dripped from its mandibles, falling to the floor's floor. A loud growl echoed from the forest. A large white dog rushed the spider creature and launched himself at its leg. Powerful jaws crunched into the exoskeleton. The creature screeched in agony. The commotion pulled Rachel's attention. Her face paled and her tears dried as she watched the fight for a second, stunned momentarily into a spectator role. Suddenly, the creature raised another of its legs and pierced the side of the dog. The dog hollered and was rolled away by the force of the hit. It slammed onto the ground hard. Anger and recognition flared in Rachel's heart. The dog was Duke, and this monster had hurt him, maybe even fatally. She raced forward and jammed her staff into the creature's face. With another screech, though muted because of Rachel's staff, the creature scratched at Rachel with its legs. Rachel pulled back her staff. She dodged one leg and blocked the other with her staff. The hit to the staff caused dark blood to drip wildly. Duke stood on shaky legs. He shook his head. Once he gathered enough energy to continue the fight, Duke ran a circle around the creature while barking, trying to pull its attention to him. The creature turned, seeming to have fallen for this. Then it pounced on Rachel. Mandibles drew close to Rachel's face. She managed to block them with her staff, but from the cracking sound it made, she knew it wouldn't last much longer. Sadness scratched at her throat. Her staff had been a gift from her late father. Duke charged into the monster's side, but was knocked aside by another leg. He yelped when he hit the ground once more. The creature was distracted for a moment. Rachel finished breaking her staff and shoved one end into the creature's skull. The creature screeched and backed away. Inky liquid dripped from the wound. Rachel and Duke ran. Rachel grabbed the rod as she passed. She wasn't going to run through the forest weaponless. The pair ran until they reached the edge of the forest. They were sure the monster had been vanquished, so they decided to rest for a second. Duke panted hard. Sweat dripped from Rachel's brow. Her hands burned. She looked at them. Blood welled in her palms. She pat Duke's uninjured shoulder. Let's get home. Back in the clearing, the sheep began convulsing. It twisted and turned in ways it never could have in life. The mouth opened, and a spider the size of a fist crawled out. 